I'm Chosen Architect, and today we start All the Mods 9. Welcome into All the Mods 9. Ah, nothing like a large mod pack full of tons and tons of mods just waiting for us to play with them. A ton of quests. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. And even in-game goals. Oh boy, this is going to be a lot. But I think I have the powerhouse ability to get through this pack and also have a lot of fun doing it. Hello, Fred. <laughs> Fred the slug. I'll have to come back for you, for sure. You're going to be the mascot. You're, yes. Oh yeah, one thing, as I always get this question, uh, a seed will be in the description below, along with tons of other links down there. So while you're in that description, be sure to check out the other links, including my second channel, where I have played through all the Mons 9 when it was in its early stages. So be sure to check that out. I mean, shoot, if you're down there checking out that uh, description, you might as well click that subscribe button. Believe it or not, over 50% of you who watch aren't actually subscribed. So I would really love it if you would. Now this sign right here is telling me that a thousand blocks this way, there's a village. There's a village out that direction. So we should try and head off that way. Oh man, there is so much to explore in this pack. Then I've already discovered a Stargate. Is that what this is? This looks just like a Stargate. Like, like from what? It is literally called Stargate Journey. Oh, wow. Okay. I have no idea what this is, but I'm sure I'm going to learn about it very soon. Now, as I start my journey out in this direction, I will say this pack does have Greg Tech in it. However, you don't have to play with any of the Greg Tech stuff if you really don't want to. There are two different types of in games. You do have a Greg Star and you also have a normal star. So uh, those are your, your sort of paths, but you are going to encounter Greg Tech related items throughout the world. I know, the word Greg Tech might scare a few of you, but I promise it's not a big deal. Also, in the quest, there is a Getting Started tab that has tons of loot that you get right off the bat, including food and all kinds of stuff, just for doing your basic tasks of getting through early game. Now, I cannot wait to see this. You could get tons of loot. We ended up getting a 4x4 or a 2x2 drawer, storage drawer from Functional Storage. So yes, you're going to get a lot of stuff just for doing your basic task. Oh, by the way, quick little tip. Once you do make your pickaxe or your tools, be sure to put them in here to turn them into Silent Gears tools. This is gonna be the tool mod that's in here and we're gonna use this quite a bit. These can get quite powerful. That's a huge zombie. Hey, stay back. Now I'm gonna work my way towards that village. I feel like villages are like the ultimate place to go to early game. You're gonna get tons of resources. Ah, oh, it's gonna make life so much easier. And honestly, what is modded Minecraft if not to just make Minecraft easier? That's how it really feels. Now I'm pretty excited to be able to explore all of these random biomes that are just all over the place. For example, this is a volcanic plains. Yeah, there's biomes of all kinds spread throughout this world. And on my journey to that village that was pointed out, you also have just discovered some sort of jungle. Cocoa beans, thank you very much. On the mini map, I think I see it, or on the main map. I can open that up by hitting M, and I now see this, or J by default, I have it changed, but oh, there is something off in the distance. I see it. I really do feel like early on in a pack like this, exploring and looting is going to be one of the best ways to jumpstart your progression. And look at this beautiful village. Oh my goodness. This has got to be one of the prettiest villages I've ever seen. Wow. Okay, already kind of settled and, and just looks super, super nice. There's honey? You could just access honey right away. Okay, there's bound to be some good loot here. Oh, is this a blacksmith? <gasps> this is a blacksmith. Okay, so, ah, we have a bed. We also get access immediately to a pickaxe made of iron. I'm gonna take the gold. Oh, this is gonna be very, very nice. I'm also taking a bed because if it gets dark on me, I really wanna sleep through the night. Now, after a good night's rest, I can go ahead and take that new pick I just got and you can actually upgrade it. Now, it may or may not keep those stats that it has on it, which might be a problem. Let's see. Yes, so if you do convert it and it already has apotheosis stats on it, it doesn't appear to keep them but I'm kind of more interested in just having an all around pickaxe. There's bound to be tons of loot. There's gotta be. This is a village for, did I, did I just walk into the bathroom? I didn't even knock. 
there's bound to be tons of loot in these. Let's go check upstairs. I mean, if anything, tons of building materials. They have a fish tank. All right, man. What? What do they not have? What is this? What does this village not have? There's tons of candles. Candles are used, by the way, for quite a few modded recipes. So definitely worth grabbing those later on down the road. Oh my gosh. And there's just honey blocks. This, this is amazing. Oh, and there's some chests up here with some animals, a pre-made barn. Oh, this might be a really great, great place to just sort of start out. Uh-huh. We have a castle with some loot. I'm not taking any of that right now. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Food. <laughs> That's the only thing I could ever want from a village. Food. All the food I can ever want. Two diamonds. It's, and that is enough obsidian in one chest. No way. To make a portal. They're just... This is just giving it to us right now. I mean, it makes sense. It's a developed village. Of course they're going to have good things. Now, this is 100% why I say exploring early on is a good thing. This is so good. Take a peek even further upstairs. Ooh. We have some spider eyes. I mean, all of this stuff is actually really nice. Sweeping edge mana region, more steak, a golden apple. Is this where the king sleeps? The king of the village? And up on top of the tower, there's a chest up here as well with a crossbow and some arrows for some protection here. Now, I think for right now, while we go explore some more, this might be a great place to sort of place our things for now and uh, keep them in a safe spot. I mean, to be fair, we're just strolling through this village and well, we haven't earned our keep here. So being in the barn only makes sense. This village actually has three blacksmiths from the looks of it. And yeah, we actually got quite a bit of iron and this even has efficiency on it. Now in this pack, we are actually given sort of permission to use the slash home command. So we can do slash set home, but there is a caveat with this. You do actually have a a 30 minute delay. If you use the command slash home to teleport back to your home location, you won't be able to use it again for 30 minutes. So it kind of helps incentivize using other methods. This is really useful, however, because we can do slash home now and it allows us to just teleport back to this location from wherever we're at, allowing early game exploration to be a little less daunting. And you know what, with those two diamonds that we just got, I want to turn this into a diamond sword, immediately upgrading because I think one of the biggest things we're going to encounter is enemies, and I want to be prepared. Now I want to head off on a journey, so I'm just going in one direction, hoping to find something cool along the way. Oh, look at these adorable little birds. They're so cute. Now this will be a little bit different from my normal progression, because normally I would just dig down straight into the world, but I do know that we should be able to find a lot more loot throughout some of these structures, if only we were to just look for them. Now, another thing I kind of want to set my eyes on is, well, uh, taking care of some of the local wildlife. Ooh, it looks like up ahead, another village. Oh, but this one doesn't seem quite as inhabited as our last one. This one actually looks quite abandoned. Very abandoned, actually. Oh, man. Ah, I think I know why. Note, the builder might get trapped when upgrading. Oh no, is this a, this is a mine colony structure. Oh man, what a felled civilization somebody must have started here. Oh no, and <laughs> they left it all in ruin. I might though take advantage of this. I can take this wool. <laughs> this, this could be pretty useful. I should be able to use this to make a sleeping bag. So I'm gonna make a crafting table and a stick and then I can use this to hopefully make myself a sleeping bag with just some wool, right? Yes. So we can just select this. And now we have a sleeping bag and we don't have to worry about resetting our spawn location. So now we can just simply sleep <laughs> the scary monsters away. Also, that crafting table and a stick can go in your curio slot and you can actually set a key bind to it to access it from inside of that crafting table and a stick slot. You just need to plop it right in here. And now I can hit my key bind and I can actually have a crafting table on demand. With inventory space and modded becoming even more scarce, the larger the mod packs become, that's a very nice feature. Now this tree right here holds a lot of importance to me and discovering one is a fantastic early game storage option. 
but you are going to need some slime and a little bit of patience if you want to get started with this mod. It's also a source of a pretty interesting food source that gives you night vision. Hey, look, there's more friends. Oh, the snail tucks in when you get close to it. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, look, though, we have a lot of friends over here. Oh, speaking of slime, these things are so worth nabbing because these can be just smelted down directly into slime balls. Gotta love the good old jellyfish. Man, I really need to find more cows, though, so I can make myself a backpack, as that's really going to expand our inventory. Now, I do recognize this. This right here is potentially death, but also reward. Because at night, these spawners can be kind of dangerous, but they sometimes house really good rewards. So we just found two more diamonds, some gold, and a name tag, an anvil, and I am completely out of inventory space. But this is definitely worth swapping for some things. And I really need to be careful where I walk. <laughs> I, I almost got attacked. <laughs> Look at this cute little guy. I don't know whether to be afraid or pet it. I just, I want to pet him. This is a little cute snake, a little boop noodle. Also, now by this point, we should be able to make a backpack. And uh, we should be able to make like the basic version of the sophisticated backpack which is going to be so nice because it can go in your backpack slot. And as soon as we get a few more materials, which I think we have enough iron at the base to upgrade it. But if we find more, that's going to be one of the first things that I intend to upgrade is definitely going to be this. And it can go in your back slot, which uh, should be this one right here and should be accessible by hitting the B key. And now we have a place to store more of our goodies as if we couldn't already hold enough in our inventory. Wow, this little valley here is beautiful. What a gorgeous little valley that goes into this autumn themed biome. Oh, the leaves falling just sells the effect. So good. Now this right here is a field that I could definitely sleep in. Honestly, just one deep breath and you're done. You're just completely done. You'd be out forever. Aha, AE2, we meet again. I don't have the ability just yet to break into that thing, but I really want to explore that mod too. Oh yeah, and just in case you were wondering, refined storage is also in the pack. Now this structure looks awfully interesting. I wonder, is this what I think it is? I know, I know what this tower is. This is from Apotheosis, but is this also an Apotheosis tower? Oh, it definitely is. It's definitely Apotheosis. And these are great for gem farming. Oh, you can get so many cool gems from this, but they're also can be some problems with, well, not this one, but this tower over here. <laughs> Just be, be wary. Am I using that word correctly? Yeah, because there could be some bad stuff that happens. <gasps> There's a mending book in that chest. Okay, I'll take that. And an apotheosis shield, which will be very handy if we go up against any mobs. All these other books, I'm not super worried about right now, but scavenger is really good. And, uh, Chainsaw is actually really good as well. You know, I'm gonna take both of these. I'm gonna, yeah, I, ain't got, I don't have a whole lot of room. Oh, but that would be so good. Now, as much as I love surprises, this particular tower houses some scary ones. Yes, there is TNT in this one. And the only reason I know that is because when I played my own pack, Chosen's Modded Adventure, well, I discovered that the hard way. Yeah, and don't forget, there's also one over here. They added more just in case the first two didn't kill you. And yes, inside here, more gold, which I am super happy to see, and also iron. Let's see, we also got lure and then shield bash. Mm, not exactly, but I will take all of these bookshelves. Now, another little quick note, as I know I completely glossed over it, as I forget from time to time, is you may be wondering, how am I breaking multiple blocks at once like this? Well, I'm actually holding down the key by default. This is what it's assigned to that is underneath your escape key. It's called the grave key or tilde key. Um, it is directly underneath your escape key, I believe on most keyboards. And you hold that down while you want to break multiple blocks and you should be able to. You can also hold that key down and shift and in scroll wheel and you can change the different shapes. This mod is called FTB Ultiman. Ooh, just over the hill. Look at this. This is all on land. What? These are normally found underwater, right? No? Oh, I need a brush. These are gravel spots. We could actually brush this, but I don't have a brush just yet. I need a little bit of copper for that. As much as I hate to. <laughs> this is for one part of the brush. And this right here is, well, the other component to the brush. So all I really need is one copper, a stick, and a feather, and we should have everything to make 
a brush. And that will allow us to sort of play around with this 120 mechanic that I've not really played around with too much. And I think that from these, we have a chance of potentially uncovering diamonds and even a sniffer egg from these suspicious looking gravel blocks. What is this? That gave me an iron nugget, okay. It's to be expected, these will not always grant us good things. That looks like a berry. Oh boy. Is this going to be charcoal? <laughs> it's gonna be charcoal. I really want a sniffer egg, but I don't know. Do sniffer eggs come from these structures? Or do they come from the ones in the oceans? And let me know down in the comments. Ooh, is this a sherd? <laughs> it's not a shard, by the way. This is a sherd. Wow, there's actually quite a few of these around. I didn't expect there to be so many of them. I've not really got to, gotten to play too much with like this mechanic. It's actually really fun. Now I did notice there is a chest in here and it has capturing two on it. Capturing is from Apotheosis and it allows us to get a spawn egg of a particular mob. Um, I'm also gonna take these carrots. Is there anything else in here? I don't think so. And I think I've cleared all of the areas out that are around this. And we ended up getting a few different sherds here. This is a cool looking one, uh, but in the sword one, I really like. Now, just to the right over here, this is a very familiar looking structure. And this is from the Blue Skies mod. And this is actually one of the ways that you can gain access to that custom dimension. However, that is gonna be something we do later on. But uh, there is a nice little friendly guy here called the Gatekeeper. And these structures can be kind of elusive. They can be hard to find. So finding one is awesome. There's also some nice things in here from that dimension. And the portal should be in here. There's part of the portal. So this is a good indication of what we get to start with. And this is going to be the ever bright dimension. Whenever we do start, we will be starting in the ever bright dimension. And I think it's seed based and you can either start in the bright or the ever dawn. I don't know why, but this gives me anxiety. Walking through this is like walking through a cornfield. There's just something about it that just triggers me. I'll tell you what though, this field is great for farming cows. I mean, it does make sense. This is a pasture. Now that looks like something worth exploring. What in the world is this? It's like a pyramid from the desert, but in this grassy area? Now I always wanna be cautious with places like this because it feels like a trap. Like it looks beautiful and all, but it also feels exactly like a trap would feel. Like it wants you to be here. I don't know what it could be. Oh, okay. All right. It is a trap. <laughs> Did you see the creepers? <laughs> okay. It is 100% a trap. This is funny. You won't fool me this go around. Oh, now this looks like a cute little village. Look at this pretty little place. It's made with that new cherry log. So this is what a cherry village would look like. I don't know what I think about it mixed with the brick, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. And ooh, we get access to a couple of cool things in here. Good food. So this looks like just standard, standard loot. Ah, no. There's actually modded loot in here. Okay, good. So we get sturdy bee casing. I might want to take that. These are infinite use bee cases, allowing you to pick up bees. And this has our first set of gear. We actually don't have any gear. So getting some like gear from this is not too bad. And a bunch of gold. This is copper gear that is like slowly oxidizing. I love that. And some pulsating alloy. I might come back for this later on. But right now, I think we're fine with our copper gear. Now that's some big butterflies. What? This looks like a beautiful monarch butterfly. These guys are massive. And then this biome over here is gorgeous looking. One of the many reasons I love modded. Look at this, Croptopia. We can just pluck the apples right off the tree. It's a lovely, I love this. Now, just what I thought the other biome gave me anxiety. <laughs> no, this one's way worse. You know what? Now that I have a little bit of leather and I have some sticks, we can definitely make ourselves a paraglider. So we can use this just a little bit to hopefully glide ourselves around. Now, yes, this is straight out of Zelda and you also have a stamina bar, just like you would in Zelda. And yep, this is, uh, if you run out, you will let go. 
<laughs> that would be a bad day. So up ahead, it looks like another large bustling village. Yes, and I hope I find some more iron here, as that would be really helpful for upgrading our backpack. It does appear like it used to be bustling and was just up and abandoned. Quickly. Very quickly, apparently. Like they had just left before I got here. Which has kind of got me worried. This is another mine colony's village, but no one's here. Oh my goodness, look what we just found. Our first waystone out in the wild. These are so nice to have. Oh, and it's going to be one of our first sources of teleportating around. And did I just say teleportating? <laughs> what is wrong with me? On my way to this other village, I just stumbled upon another nope rope. <laughs> They're adorable. Oh no, this one's after me. <laughs> I'm noping out of here. What is this? This is also from that Stargate mod from back in the beginning. And this looks like a, a code. We should probably put this in a note somewhere. Maybe this abandoned portal will have some good loot in here. Sometimes you can get silk touch from these. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a lot of loot. Compressed iron. Warp scrolls. Oh, I'll take the warp scrolls, actually. We need a surface. Oh, the warp scrolls will be really nice. That's like a simple way to teleport around. I, I just don't have... I just don't have enough room right now for all of this other stuff. I think I should be careful wandering the ocean. That does not look friendly. I also don't know, is this, this kitten right here? Is this... Is this cat? I don't know if it's friendly or not. I need to leave this alone. That's a big cat. Wow, this is why I really need to upgrade my backpack. All of these leaves on these forbidden trees, they drop golden nuggets. I really need one of these saplings. I think this is where the warp scrolls are really going to come into play because what we should be able to do is shift right click one of the warp scrolls and we need to keep this in our inventory here. And what I wanna do is teleport back to our base by using the slash home command. That should take us back home, right? And then to get back to that location, all we have to do is click on the scroll with the new coordinates on it, and that will teleport us back to that location. Oh, that's gonna be so nice. And we also wanna keep that waystone on us, just in case we find another one. Then we'll have a two way uh, to get back and forth. I'm going to get this cleared out, and I'm going to get my backpack upgraded. The nice thing is, is we have just enough iron to be able to upgrade it to an iron, and then to gold, because we found all of that gold. We're about to find even more gold. Now, with everything cleared up, to get back to where we were at, all I have to do is simply right-click, and we're teleported right back. That is so convenient. And this right here, as you see, this, if we go ahead and harvest this, has a chance of dropping gold nuggets. This is a tree that literally will give you gold nuggets. It's so nice. And let's not forget, the logs on these trees are also quite beautiful. Now, as if we haven't already been Zelda-fied enough, let's Zelda our way over to that Zelda tower off in the distance. Now, these can be quite difficult to scale, and I think one of the best ways to do it is by grabbing some building blocks and breaking your path up here then jumping and then trying to place a block directly underneath where you just broke like that and then continue your way up instead of potentially falling off here, which could be kind of catastrophic. Now, once we're up here, that's where the reward is because there's a waystone here and this gets us our second waystone and there's the potential of getting ender pearls from here, which I really like. And look, it gives us a free paraglider. I don't really need the paraglider, but I will take everything else out of here. Look at that. Now to get down, well, just hope your paraglider works and hope you don't run out of stamina, which is, you know, honestly bound to happen. And I'm curious if I let it drain enough and we fall into the water, will it just let go? It does last quite a while, but there it goes. And yes, we do drop it entirely, but it looks like we could potentially catch ourselves, which is actually nice. Now, this structure, believe it or not, with it being evil craft and, and not exactly a mod I want to dive into 100% right now, the structures are actually really, really useful. So let me go ahead and build up here and I'm going to scaffold my way up using sticks. Yes, you can build with sticks. Um, and I'm hoping that there is a chest in here. Aha. Yes, there is. Because this chest is usually loaded with goodies. Look at this, catalyzing glands. That is fantastic. I think two of these, right? I think you, oh, three of them make a gas tier. 
There's also some copper. There's a trident in here. Yes. Um, looks like some spirit orbs, new mana craft stuff, a bunch of bones. This is all worth grabbing. A loot capacitor for Ender.io. Yes, Ender.io is in the pack. Oh, that's fantastic. Even the scrolls from Irons, Spells, and Spellbook, which is a really cool little mod that we're going to get into later. Also some, um, some Apona, I believe. I think I said that right, which is the ashes. This is also, I believe, a mod that allows you to kind of make slime balls early game, which is really handy. None of this other stuff I'm super interested in. But man, I was really hoping to get something special out of this, but there's always a chance. I guess source berries are kind of nice. Oh, man. Now, this biome is definitely an old friend to see. Nothing like good old Ars Nouveau. I absolutely love this mod. Oh, and this is a beautiful biome as well. Tell you right now, I really feel like I am in a swamp. Look at all this tall grass. This is insanely tall grass. This looks like another Stargate. These, these numbers. Does this mean we can teleport to this location from there? No, strange. This is, this is the same code that we got before. Huh. Now, surely some random cabin in the middle of nowhere will be a good thing, right? I think it doesn't look super hostile from the outside. These trap doors are really nice. Oh, this is from Blue Skies as well. Oh, this is nice. This is a really nice little cabin, my dude. <laughs> the friendly gatekeeper. Is there a different loot in here? Oh, he's got more loot in this, this one. And there's a little stairway that leads up. Oh, there's cobweb right at the entrance. Ah, this is where the portal is here. And there's a tr another trident. You know, the thing with modded, I feel like with vanilla, I have struggled so hard sometimes in hardcore runs in regular vanilla Minecraft, just trying to get a trident, you know, setting up massive farms and it taking over 300 kills. Yeah. And then you're just handed one in modded. <laughs> it's so goofy. I mean, to be fair, though, you're basically just handed one in bedrock as well. Oh, wow. Now this looks like an interesting village. Look at all that brick, the work, the carpentry. They put a lot into this. These are quartz blocks. This is a thriving civilization here. Does that mean you have good loot? Ooh, I will take these flowering pots. Oh, this will save me a little bit of smelting. This is really nice because pots are used for botany pots. And botany pots mean pretty much infinite trees and all kinds of other resources. And if we don't have to make these, that saves a whole lot of time. Yeah, this village's loot is actually kind of nice. I'm going to replace my bow with that one. That's a pretty cool name. <laughs> Bow of the Sniper. Very nice. Ooh, this must be the librarian's area. Oh, this is a totally nice chest. It is Dark Steel Ingots for Ender.io. Riptide, Longevity, a smithing template I will take. Um, We can even take the compressed iron. That's probably better than what I'm currently wearing. It looks like. Yeah. That's definitely nice. The copper gives me resistance, but overall, that's pretty good. Is there anything else in here? Oh, there's an upstairs. Yeah, they're, they're basically just giving us pots at this point. <laughs> I will take them. There's even another waystone in here. Yes, thank you. I will take. This looks like their uh, their church. Is this what this is? Their temple? There's a lot of them. They're, it must be Sunday. We're all waiting here. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yes, this is exactly what it is. What could be in here? Oh, some gems and some emeralds. I will love that. Oh, nice. And the blacksmith one has an iron golem's traveling backpack. That's a pretty cool find. A vibrant bimetal gear. I'm going to hold off on these for a moment. Yes, but I will take this backpack because that's always just extra storage. And I think we can also put this backpack inside of our backpack. Now, one thing I haven't done this entire time is, well, yank a few villagers. I'm going to worry about this later. We found a ton of villagers. I'm so sorry. I should not have done that. <laughs> we found a ton of villagers. Um, but, uh, I should be able to go back to those villages and find more. I just don't want to fill my inventory up with a bunch of villagers. That just always feels so wrong to say. Is that a duck? And he waddled away. If we can get to it quick. This is a cave spider. Ooh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, this has five diamonds in it. Okay, I will take that. And a creeper spawn egg. No way. No. What? All right. I, this is, this is nice. This is why exploring is so good. I'm also going to take some of this dripstone that could be useful later on. Oh man. It's fantastic. This color in this biome is ridiculous looking. Whoa. 
That is insanely colorful feeling and warm. And I love the name of this biome. It's a fungal jungle. Oh, this could be good and bad. Is this a jungle temple? Oh, it looks like the same one that we found earlier, just a jungle version of it. Oh, I bet this is heavily trapped as well. And we're just not equipped for traps. We really aren't. I guarantee there's no way this has an actual bottom to it, right? Oh, it's... That's interesting. <gasps> oh, it's silver fished. Oh, we would need silk touch for this. Ah, yes, definitely danger. Believe it or not, I think I have absolutely made it full circle <laughs> back to our original village. Oh my goodness, we don't even need to teleport back. I am back here. Up there is the village. Oh, this will be nice. Then we can actually save all of our, uh, our cooldowns. And here we are. <laughs> Very nice and convenient. Now, there's still one more thing I wanted to do. So I've head over back to where our original Stargate was at. And I want to see what this is all about. Now, this does show that it has some crystals in it. I really don't know what that's all about, but we need to input this number. That's 26, 6, 14, 31, 11, right here, and then 29. And then we enter, and it, it like burns out. I noticed though that, oh, oh, I shift right click. Okay. Okay. Um, I have no idea what this is. I should probably put a waystone here though, just in case. Um, because I have no idea where this is going to send me. Uh, let's go. What? Where is this going to? This is an entirely different dimension. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess that's going to be it for today. Um, because... Oh, it, ju it just closed. I hope it's the same code. Because, well, this is, this is my home now. Now that's definitely a way to end an episode. Well, if you know anything about this place, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. And uh, let me know, is this place worth worth exploring? I know I should be able to get back, but uh, goodness, I've never, I've never experienced this mod before. <laughs> what an experience. If you did enjoy today's episode, click that subscribe button. If you haven't already, you'd actually be surprised. Over 50% of you guys are not actually subscribed that watch the channel. So I would love it if you would click that subscribe button as it helps out a lot and also lets you guys know when I publish new episodes. And also give this video a thumbs up as it helps the algorithm like these videos. And uh, well, guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Akiva. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Also gaining access to our supporter servers in which we do have an All The Mods 9 server open. So be sure to check that out. Links down in the description below if you're looking to join the Discord. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.